Generating an attractive character with AI is relatively easy, but generating the same character in different poses appearing in your short film several times is something that's harder than it looks. Here is Tao, one of the characters from our upcoming universe. You see that in the different viewing angles of Tao, he still remains consistent. So for us, it's essential to have a steady character if you want to incorporate it into a story, into a universe. This is really the basics. If you also struggle to keep your characters consistent, I offer in this tutorial to address this issue and get a result that can serve as a good foundation for what's to come. So before we start, do not hesitate to subscribe to our channel. It pleases us, it shows us that our research is useful to you and it pushes us to make more tutorials to share with you our discoveries and progress. So with Thibaut on Fiction.ie, we use Stable Diffusion and more specifically Automatic 11.11. .11. So here is the interface. Uh, we already talked about it in the previous tutorial. Here I'm going to go a bit more into detail for this tutorial. So here we see that we've chosen the Copax model, Timeless, etc. So here you can see the whole list. We we, we take this one. Sampling method, we often use DPM++, 2M SDE, Keras. You can choose from the list that is there. We're going to make our character in 20 steps. We are not going to use the high resolution because it takes time. It's heavy, etc. So for now, we don't really need it. The refiner, we can leave it. So if I want to open, for example, the high resolution, I'm going to click on my arrow here and then it will open the window with all the settings and it will take it into account for the generation we do not want. So we redo. The refiner, we can leave it. Similarly, if I don't want it, I press my arrow and it closes. This is to adjust the size of your image. It's going to be the number of images that will generate for you. So it's interesting that we try to get a character who basically fits in our prompts. We will generate four to be able to compare them there as I just did before. And then here we have our prompt. So you see, I tried to be quite precise about his physical description so that he could stand as much as possible. So for example, here I have marked a man with blue eyes 2.02. So we noticed that for the blue eyes, it was pretty good to put in parentheses like that, the blue eyes, otherwise you have slightly blue eyes. A bit strange, we're going to say. So putting it like this, it allows to have realistic, beautiful blue eyes. So there I specify his age, the color of his hair, casual haircut. So here I'm trying to detail it. And now we're going to start the generation and we'll see what's going on. So there's the generated four for me. So we see that overall, it's not too bad at the face level. I find it quite consistent. So we are going to go with that. Now, if you think it lacks consistency, a tip you can use is to imagine a fictional name. So I don't know, for example, instead of human, I will say ah. I want Alexander, I don't know what we can call him, McCoy, Jack, uh, or let your imagination run wild. You need to test, you need to try. And actually by putting an imaginary name like that, the machine will be more framed. Improve your chances of having a character that's a bit more consistent across generations. Let's see what that gives. Is our Alexander McCoy it's going to be successful or not? Uh, 
Okay, I think we're doing pretty well on Alexander. So now that we have our characters Kara, we're going to use MetaHuman. So I'm going to show you right away how it works. And on your browser, you go to MetaHuman. Unreelundin.com. So all you need to do is create an account with your email. So now we're going to launch the MetaHuman Creator. So it may take a little bit of time. If I had a guy who looked a bit like our Alexander that would suit me, we choose a character. So we have Yori, we're going to click on create selection and we have Yori. So what I'm going to do is I'll take my Alexander and I'll display it next to me, my character, and I'm going to create a um, a meta-human who looks as much like my character as possible without overthinking it too much. So the skin, I'm going to give it a slightly lighter skin color. Here is the texture of the skin. You see when you change, there are many different textures. So it really ages, it's not great. So I was rather going to a uh, Then you see, you can adjust several things, brightness, etc. Freckles, you can choose to give him freckles or not. I don't feel like giving him any. Specificity, you can adjust things here too. A lot of things you... What's cool is that you can sculpt his face. If you see, I can sculpt everything. So if you press, if you press the Alt key and you click, it allows you to rotate your character. So to see him in profile in all positions. So for me, looking at his lips, I see that, bam, I'm going to change slightly. He has slightly fuller lips, Alexander. I'm going to also overstate it a bit. The jaw. You can move the stuff. I can make them more square, more plump. As for the nose, I don't want it to be arched like that, so I think I can change it. Anyway, there is no style like our model. So here we have this character. As for the eyebrows, we can also get closer to our base character. I thought his eyebrows were pretty good already. We can adjust the eyebrow height.
The eyelashes, we can put a bit longer lashes on them. The mustache, I think he looks pretty good like that. So I'm not going to touch it. Same goes for the beard. And then we can obviously have his body too, which can be useful when we want to generate the entire body. So we'll see, we're going to see, especially the portrait. There you go. You can change the bottom, the shoes. You can really do everything. So maybe we can dress it so that it's still coherent. So here I have it. I close this. These are all the keyboard shortcuts. So it bothers us. So I close here. So now I have my character from the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot. Do profiles. from the other profile. So MetaHuman has allowed us to have our character base from the front and side. And now we are going to return to automatic 11.11 .11. And we're going to use what's called the control net. So I'll explain right away how it works. Now we go back to the automatic lever interface. Yes, it's good. We can keep the same cider, the character that we liked earlier. So we are going to generate only one. I am on exactly the same settings as before. I'm generating my image. I have my character here. Now I'm going to use the Sitachelnet. It's here. So to unfold the net control, I unfold here and I will come to deposit my front base here. I will of course place myself in an apple, meaning it will use the control nut. If I don't tick this enable box, it won't work. I'm going to use the control net with depth, so I'm going to put depth. DP is an algorithm that looks at the depth of each element. We notice that it's a good compromise, really. Don't hesitate to test. So here I am looking at what it gives, how the machine will interpret, so it calculates. And you see, so it may not necessarily look very good on the screen, but the machine cuts your image according to the depth. So here you have the control weight. It will be the weight of the control net. Uh, so here we are at 75%. That mean um, that um, the weight of the net control is less important than the weight of your prompt. Then you have ending control step. So we usually set it to 0.3. It's to say you're going to generate your image in 20 steps already on these 20 steps. For 30% of these 20 steps, you will use the citral net. But the citral net, he's going to be at 75% of your own. That is to say, you don't give it the same value as your own. But all this you can adjust. So in fact, you need to understand how it works. It's simply, you have the weight of your prompt, which is there, and the weight of the next control, which is nearby, and that we've adjusted is less significant than the weight of the prompt. That means I want the machine to hold more accounts. From my prompt, 
just net control. However, I want the machine to use uh, to calculate the depth of the image, to calculate the structure of the image, and so to have my character well in front, well in depth. Thread respects the clean control during uh, for X steps. So there I said, for example, during 30% of the steps, which makes it so that at the end of this 30% of steps, well, all that's left is your clean control pump. She doesn't take it into account anymore. And I continue with your prompt. It means that it allows it to align the structure of your image, meaning it should be correctly facing or in profile, uh, align the elements based on what we worked with the depth, with the depth, so to set its elements correctly and then to let your prompt run freely. So then it's really about finding the right balance between the two. Because if you put too much of uh, with clear control, you're going to lose the essence of your image. It's not going to work. If you don't put enough, the image won't be structured enough. So then there you go. It's really test, test, test. That's how we find so here we are going to do a test. We are going to generate our image with these settings and you will see what it gives. Here is what we have from the front. All right, so it's normal. It changes her hairstyle because I couldn't find the same one. But here I have my character facing forward. Now I'm going to do exactly the same thing. For face, I'm going to slide my profile here. With the same settings. I'm going to calculate the depth. And in the same way, I'm going to generate a So here we can see that maybe the net control is a bit strong. We're going to lower it a bit. There you go. And I have my character, so I might raise the net control a little bit more slightly. In AI, don't hesitate to really test, uh, test things, change parameters. So here we can see that I've gone too high on the net control. I lower it again. And I'm going to do the same with uh, my second profile. After that, I have my three characters who are doing pretty well. So two faces, two profiles. See, he kept me in the same outfit, close, and the other profile. So I have a character who is relatively consistent, which serves as a good base. Then here we go, don't hesitate. To test, move parameters, find your good configurations, the ones that suit you the best and that suit your character the best. We use DP, but it's not necessarily, maybe there are other settings that work. Don't hesitate to really test and don't hesitate to give us, to tell us, don't hesitate to tell us in the comments. So if you find any settings or interesting things, don't hesitate to share what you find I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and I'll see you soon.